Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you how you can track your face movements onto your character in Star Citizen. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try out some of the free pre-made shards or you can also make your own custom shards and share them with the community through the built-in marketplace. So gone are the days where you have no more rooms for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports other games like Elite Dangerous. So follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. Use the offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. Now before we start setting this up, you're going to need some equipment, but all you really need is a webcam. It doesn't have to be a good one, actually I'm using one that I bought like 10 years ago. And just to show you, this is the camera that I'll be using for the face tracking as you can see. Image quality is not exactly up to standard with modern cameras. The first thing you do is we're going to head into the options menu and we're going to head over here to the comms and FOIP, that is face over IP, that's what we're looking for, and hit tracking. This is over here. We're going to go down here to what they call face wear. That is the one that we're going to be using for, um, for our well, face tracking. Now, when you look at it here, we can see the camera here and we have a number of different options. And you might think that picking the highest resolution is going to give you the best result. That's not necessarily the case because you're also going to be spending some system resources on this, of course, and you want to run a lower resolution just to um, to make it lighter on the um, on your system so you don't spend too much resources on it. You can see here some of them will have a little asterisk next to them. Those are the ones they recommend. Um, so take whatever it recommends in here in terms of, uh, of resolution. You can go down here to, um, to face wear, enable face over IP, which is face tracking, and we can see, say yes. Once we've done that, we can calibrate the camera just to make sure it works. So click here on calibrate. It's gonna open up this new interface. You can see it's now have a multiple the um, tracking markers, that's both tracking my lips, it's tracking my, my nose, it's tracking my uh, my eyebrows, it's trying to at least. It does that a little bit better without glasses, so as you can see here. And also tracks as my, my eyes are blinking. Now, once you've confirmed that, uh, that, this, is, um, that this is working as, as we wanted to, you're just going to go Alt F4 to uh, close it down again. And that's actually all you really need. And as you can now see here in the background, movements, my lip movements are now being transferred over. And if I close an eye, it has again, as I said, it has a little bit of a harder time doing it with um, uh, with glasses on. But you can definitely see that eyebrows are being tracked, my mouth is being tracked um, in the game and is now transferred over. It really, sometimes it does, but you see, just really want to close the eye properly. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> it's it's quite fun. We can also set up head tracking because right now we are just tracking facial features. We are not actually tracking head movements. So in order to do that, let's head in here to um, to the same menu again. It's going to be the comms and face over IP. Um, we already done all this. Next up, you go down here to the head tracking. You can see right now my head tracking is disabled. So you can choose the source. You can either go with obviously disabled what we had, uh, track IR if you have that. You can use the face wear, so whatever you're using for tracking your facial features can also track your head movements. So we're going to select that in this case here. He next, go through all these settings and these are different situations where you want head tracking to work and head tracking not to work. For instance, in FPS, I find it quite annoying to have uh, head tracking when I'm running in in first person, especially if I'm trying to aim down sights, stuff like that. Now, for the purpose of this video guide, I'm going to enable it. So set that to no, so not disabling it doing FPS or first person, um, simply just because I want it to work here in, uh, in the test. So now you will see that absolutely nothing is happening. And that's because we need to set up the key bindings for it as well. So we're going to head back into the menu, go to key bindings. In my case, I'm going to be uh, setting up for my whole test. So go in here to advanced controls, scroll all the way to the bottom. And here you have voice over IP, face over IP and head tracking. Open that up and you can see here I've already set the buttons. We're just gonna rebind them to uh, to show you. But you have enable um, enable head tracking. You can just click that and we're gonna set that to maybe that button there. And then I also recommend you set the recenter button, which just means if if it doesn't look straight ahead, when you're looking straight ahead, you just press the recenter button. So I'm just gonna set that too. So there we go. So now I can click my enable head tracking. And now you can see as I turn my head, it is tracking my facial movements um, and it's 
uh, also tracking my like it's tracking my head movements and my facial movements at um, at the same time. Now there is a ton of settings that you can set up in here. Um, for instance, here you have all the head tracking face mask settings where you have pitch roll jaw sensitivity you have the various dead zones if you want it right now we have dead zones it will kind of snap to the center that could be a little annoying so you can just remove the dead zones you can set them where you want play around with these settings if you feel like it's too slow in in, in one of the rotations then just play around with the sensitivities um and all that and you can kind of tune it to your liking so that it begins to feel natural when you're sitting and uh, and you're looking around. But just so I can show you without the dead zones, there we go. It now has a much smoother like transition across the center as we're looking from side to side. And we can still see how it's tracking my, um, my lip movement here as we're sitting and talking. There are other ways if you want better head tracking. There is actually a lot other things you can do. Um, if you have a Toby eye tracker, which I do, you can also use that for head tracking. So that means if I drop this over to the Toby, that means right now the, the webcam is tracking face movements and the Toby is tracking head movements. Um, and similarly, if you scroll down here, you have head tracking. Toby have all the same situation, uh, all the same settings down here for all the sensitivities and all that stuff. You can do all of that um, and, and sit and tweak that here. And what are the main benefits for stuff like uh, the Tobies, of course, it can also track your eyes. I don't necessarily think it can actually show that in game, but it allows you to use this gaze-based targeting. I do have a video out on that. Awesome feature just allowing you to look at a target on the screen, whether it's on the right side or left side, you just look at it and you click target and it selects that target. Don't have to have it straight ahead. It doesn't do like a uh, target straight ahead. It targets what you're looking at, which is a really awesome feature. But right now I swapped it over to uh, to the Toby eye tracker and that should track a little bit better um, than the camera does. But yeah, it's simple as that. That's how you set up the face tracking in Star Citizen. And trust me, it is a ton of fun sitting here playing around with it and, uh, and seeing your character mimic your face movements.